So like coronavirus is a perfect example of needing a national response to something like this that's happening across the country. And a lot of these, a lot of the looting and destruction seemed planned. And the guy they caught in Tennessee who, who burned down the courthouse was a white nationalist. Um, yeah. And I don't doubt that there's people on the left who are like, you know, the extreme anarchists on the left who are doing some stuff and the extreme white nationalists on the right that are doing some stuff. Um, but it just does seem, I mean, the funny thing, it seems coordinated. And what I, what wouldn't surprise me is because usually people on the extreme left and the extreme right, like the anarchists and the, and the, um, what's the word who they don't like anything. They just want everything to burn. Um, I'm blanking on the word. Uh, you mean like um, like nihilists? Or? Nihilists. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> nihilists. They're all fucking like low IQ people. Most of them. Like I'd say like the vast, vast, vast majority of them are very low IQ people. So it wouldn't surprise me if one group is like is kind of running both of them at the same time. You know, and, and it just it wouldn't surprise me at all. <sighs> Yeah, that's possible. I it's very very hard to tell what uh, uh, any of that. I mean, I've seen. I mean, well, I'm so I'm I'm getting my news mainly from Twitter, well, because I don't trust anywhere else, and Twitter yeah. is just as crazy of a place to get news. Oh yeah, but like you know, there's like all these videos of of uh, piles of bricks dropped off in random yeah. residential neighborhoods. Yeah. And, stuff. and the black and people like, going like, what the fuck is this? Like, we didn't yeah. bring this. Like, wh- who put this here? And it's it's tough because, like, in most of those videos, like, like, in most of those videos, if you look closely, like, there are construction sites there and there are places that need bricks, but it's like, it does seem a little insane that yeah. like, they were just dropped off in the middle of a protest. I like, mean, honestly, I've lived in New York, Austin, Detroit, San Diego, Los Angeles, and a big city bricks. in Wyoming. I've never seen piles of bricks just on the sidewalk like that. Well, the ever. only the only places I've seen that were reporting that were places like Tulsa, places like like uh, small towns in Ohio. Like I, I didn't hear of any big cities having Dallas piles of just bri- didn't. I, I was one of them Dallas. Okay. I thought one of them was Dallas. It was, it was a black well, woman who was, who was reporting it and being like, who put this well, here? Like, like well, they're trying to, they're trying to make us yeah. look bad. Like we're the ones who put it there. And so and, uh, I, I, I think it's worth pointing out on, I, I think we're the perfect show to do this, but it's kind of our responsibility to be skeptical of all these things. And, and, it's I'm really conflicted about it because we also live in an age where we actually need to be taking people's words. Like yeah. we ne- we need to be taking the w- the word of um, a woman who says that she's sex- sexually assaulted. Uh, we need to take the word of black people who said that they've been abused by police. Like we need to listen to them because it's too easy for people to say, "Oh, that's just one account. That's anecdotal." Yeah. Um, Hold on, one second. I'm gonna turn off my AC. Yeah, I mean, and and when you say we need to believe, you mean like investigate, not we just brush inv- it off. Well, we need to investigate, right? but we also, I mean, we need to we need to be more prepared to believe people that we have. I mean, yeah. we can't believe the possibility that it's true. Yeah, and then do some investigating. Yeah, we then- can't. We really can't. Uh, we can't. I'm just. This uh, this talk of like, you know, just assuming that somebody's trying to instigate or I, I don't know. It's just it's our responsibility to listen and investigate and still be skeptical. I mean, all of those videos that make it look like stuff is coordinated. Sure. Yeah. And then your brain goes, this is coordinated. But take a step back and go like, is that really possible? Like, uh, what what the hell is going on here? Like the truth of it. No, and this is. This is what this is all about is that like our country is built on taking advantage of people 
Our country is built on, basically, our country is built on white males being able to do whatever they want. Yeah. And that's really fucked up. And that's what this is. I mean, for me, this is, that's what this is. This is us trying to change that. And if you believe anything else, I'm sorry, but you either don't understand systematic racism or you don't realize how racist you are yourself. But that's what this is about. This isn't, this isn't, this isn't about a conspiracy theory. This isn't about, um, uh, is it, I mean, it's not even just about a bad president. A bad president's a big part of it, but that's not all it's about. I mean, this is about hundreds of years of oppression. And that's and, why, and that's what, uh, and those are the words I try to use instead of racism because, like, this is, I'm going to get esoteric for, give me like two minutes to get esoteric and nerdy. Okay. Like, race isn't a thing. Race isn't a biological word. There's ethnicity. There's populations. So like when, but when biologists talk about different communities and different colors of people, they use specific biological terms, ethnicity, uh, creed, population, because there is no genetic difference between me and a black person outside of the, the, the genetic marker that signifies what, how much pigment I'm going to have in my skin or what color my hair is going to be. There's no genetic difference outside of that. So the genetic difference between me and JJ, I'm a blonde, JJ is a brunette. The same genetic variation between me and him is the same genetic variation between me and a black person. So there's no, there's no, race is a word that was created by white supremacists as a way of convincing white people that there could be a lesser race. Interesting. That's very profound. And so by um, using the word race and racist, we're accepting the premise of their argument that there could be a lesser race and that you can be racist towards a lesser race. Now, white, like white supremacy is absolutely a thing. Oppression is absolutely a thing. And white supremacists for the last 400 years in this country have been oppressing people of color, any color, the Native Americans, black people, Mexicans, Chinese. If they're not, if they can't pass as white, white, white supremacists will figure out a way to oppress them for their own profit. Because that's all, at, at the end of the day, that's all it comes down to. It's just all motivated by greed, financial gain. And so, so I w oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, that's good. Oh, I'm, I, I want to talk about about crypto and the crypto space and how disappointing it is for me yeah. to see how many people who don't think that this is their issue that this is something that they should speak about and i don't know if it's i don't know if it's crypto i don't know if it's like like the internet in general and the culture of leader and follower that we have but this idea that i mean i see people posting on twitter that i saw somebody um, I'm not going to say who they are because then I'm just going to start trashing people. But, you know, somebody said, oh, if you take a side, you lose followers. And if you don't take a side, you lose followers. Yeah. And it's like, well, then the answer is fucking obvious. Take your side and it better yeah. be the one that is for people and America. But you because... know, what? even if you're not, just fucking take your side. Just put it out there. <laughs> Stop being such a pussy. If you're a white nationalist, just fucking tell people you're a white nationalist. And that's what I have a lot of black friends who say, I actually feel safer in the South because I know who the fucking white, white supremacist is. Interesting. When I'm in the North, when I'm in California, it's all fucking hidden. They don't let you know. They do not let you know that they, that they won't give you that job because they're, because you're black. It's like the woman in Central Park. That's what, that's what my, like my black friends at work, that's who they're afraid of. Mm -hmm. That woman in Central Park, because those are the ones you don't know are white supremacists. And will see and will and will actively try to get you killed. Whereas so, when when they come up in, in you know with a with a truckload of good old boys waving the, waving the Confederate flag, they can turn to their kid and say, "Avoid those people. Those people want to hurt you." There are some there are some friends of ours, friends of the show, that I also I kind of feel like I'm not going to call out any specific, you know, a, a counselor. Or people in crypto, but I, I do want to draw attention to the fact that if if you are choosing to stay out of this, if you if you think that this is not an issue that's related to your crypto account, then I really hope you understand how lucky you are that you get to do that, and that like mm -hmm. you you 
you get to go, ah, you know, I'm going to sit this one out. Maybe I'm not American. Oh, this is an American issue, so I'm going to sit this one out. Well, it's not really an American issue. I mean, sure, it's an American issue, but it's your issue too. Yeah. And and by 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 maybe you don't have anything constructive to add to this. Maybe you don't. Maybe you really and so okay, then fine, stay out of it. But man, like I hope deep down that bothers you a bit. I hope that 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 I hope that it bothers you that you get to that you get to stay silent about something when other people don't get that chance. They don't get that. They don't get that. They don't get to do that. Yeah. So yeah, crypto, I mean that yeah. that literally is the definition of privilege right there is not yeah. having to get didn't involved say if the you word. don't want it. I didn't want well, to say the word privilege, but I mean, it absolutely is. Yeah. So when someone says you have privilege and they're like, I, I don't have privilege, like we're, we're, we are right now saying that is privilege. If you can say when mass riots are breaking out because black people are being murdered by the police and not just black people, white people are being murdered by the police too. So when black people say stop killing us, they're not saying stop killing black people. They're saying stop killing everybody. But it's happening more in these communities of color where this oppression is happening and they're not living in white neighborhoods. So they can't speak to white people about it. They can't speak to what white people are experiencing with the cops. They can only speak to what they're experiencing with the cops. And white people need to be like, oh shit, you know what? I have that same experience. Maybe I should fucking stand next to them. Or maybe I should go on Twitter and voice voice my support. Or maybe, or maybe, or maybe. Do, do whatever you need to do. Donate $10 or whatever. If you feel like if you're experiencing that. But, you know, you got people like Nick Sabo. This is what I mean. If you're a Why white nationalist or if, you're, or if you're a conservative or you're whatever, just say it. Start a dialogue. Whatever. At least people know who you are and at least people can actually say, why do you think that way? But when you hide it from everybody, like Nick Sabo is like full on government's great authoritarian state is great uh, you know I, I mean this is what I, i'm just going by his twitter account for the last couple of days he seems all for the cops hurting people right now i don't know what's in his head i'm not saying he thinks that but that's the impression i'm getting from his from his account well let's but let's, yeah let's be real a lot of a lot of crypto twitter is is siding with the cops here and I'll, i mean i don't know if it's that i mean for a bunch of quote unquote cypherpunks who helped build a system to separate themselves from authority and banks and central government, the amount of, and I don't like, and I'm, I'm going to be a little hyperbolic right now, but the amount of bootlicking going on right now in crypto Twitter and the, tw- in the, in the crypto space is bonkers to me. There's it's almost of, like yeah. they don't actually understand what crypto is for. And then I realize, Oh yeah, most people don't know what crypto is for. Most people are, number go up and that's all they care about well there's anti-government sentiment and there's uh i mean it comes from a place of anti-establishment right distrust the banks and distrust the fed and distrust the government okay so uh, so where like at at what point is it like that you love guns so much and the police have guns and therefore you you side with the police here i I don't really get it because i don't either I, I mean, there's, don't either. Th- there's a point where it doesn't connect to me. There's a point where it's like, <sighs> it's just, you know, it's that, it's that great quote. Um, hold on. Let me look it up for a second. The there's, I, I want all of our, I want everybody in crypto to know that that's not, I want everybody who's not in crypto to know that that's not all that crypto is. I feel like there's this idea that crypto is all libertarians, gun-toting libertarians that want to see a privatized world with no government. And that's that's literally not, that's that's not it. Yeah. I mean, like we are that's here, not what's we, happening we are right trying now. to use our voice however small it might be. And thank God our voice is fucking small because I see people who have all this, this quote unquote influence. They've amassed these followers and they can only do that by actually being as bland as possible and giving the world what they want. You yeah. can't, you can't get popular if you have a voice like ours. You just, you just can't, we're just going to yeah. be here and be talking. And if you're, if you happen to agree or disagree with what we're saying, uh, keep listening because you you know maybe we can learn something from each other because those other accounts they're not yeah I, so, it just, so there's the great quote from Mar- martin 
Nimaler or Nimaler, uh, Nimalter or whatever, uh, from, he was a Lutheran pastor and it's, it's at the Holocaust Muse- uh, Memorial in Boston. And the quote, and, and it really kind of goes to this right now, where it's just, you know, they came first for the communists and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a communist. And they came for the Jews and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the trade unionists and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a trade unionist. Then they came for the Catholics and I didn't speak up because I was a Protestant. Then they came for me. And by that time, there was no, no one left to speak up. Uh-huh. And so you can sit there and say, well, I'm not black. I'm not being oppressed. But listen to all the right wing accounts. They keep saying, well, more white people are killed by cops every year than black people. So why the fuck aren't you standing up and saying this is wrong? Police should not be killing white people. Police should not be killing black people. Police should not be killing any American citizen. Unless they have a gun and are shooting at the police, then the police should be defending themselves. Yes. But the fact that so many people, I just read a stat that said as the, the, um, as public sector union unions increase, the the will of the people decreases. So, and, and this is public sector, not private sector. So, public unions. So, like, so the police union. As the police union has gotten bigger and stronger, so have the amount of people that the police have murdered. There shouldn't in this be country. police unions, by the way. There, there shouldn't. shouldn't. Yeah. The, I mean, the I. I'm curious. I mean, you're an opinionated guy, and you've thought you've thought a lot about this. So, yes, I'm opinionated. I mean, do like is the is abolishing the police an option? And because I have a real problem with the way law works in this country. I mean, obviously, we've got corrupt police. We've got we've got um, brainwashed police. I mean, the fact that. I mean, Bennett Tomlin this morning said, "I keep waiting for the good cops to arrest the bad cops," and it's it's like, yeah, it's not happening. And I, people are holding out hope for, well, you know, everyone's going to turn on Trump eventually. It's like I don't know. I don't no, know if everyone's always going to have so, that forty percent. So, so, so it's like, in order to get a new system, the the, um, the prison system in this country, like the the way that we rehab people is really fucked up. I mean the yeah. fact that if we don't like the way that you the way that you are socially, we throw you into a box and treat you like shit and give you a bad place to live. Like that doesn't that doesn't that's really not help rehab. society. That's not, <laughs> it doesn't doesn't help society. And the fact that we've got intimidating cops with guns that are meant to scare you into acting a certain way. We're we're here to frighten you into acting a certain way. Yeah. And to me that's just not a way for a society to grow. So so do you, do we abolish the police? Do we start a new protective police force? I can't and if we do that, how do we do that without burning everything to the ground first? Well, what are your thoughts on that? Cuz I don't so I, I'm like I I've heard got to burn it down. <laughs> I've heard Boston has done really well with um converting their police force into focusing on de-escalation. And I've heard the stats have have turned around and they've gotten really good results from that. And I think that right now it's, it's, you know, the, the, the hours to become a police officer are like on par with the hours it takes to become a hairstylist. I think, (laughs) I think that should change. I think police should have, have to go through like a year's worth of, of firearm training to learn how to de-escalate and do all that before they're before they're allowed to be a police officer, I think that. I mean, the fact that in other countries, you so be really pe- careful the way we train people, though, because yeah. we're seeing we're seeing training that is very effective. It's just the wrong training. Well, they're militarizing the police force and they're teaching yeah. them military style tactics, mm-hmm. and that is not how you how you treat your own people. Yeah, you got to teach people how to be public servants, not not soldiers. Exactly. So if you go to Europe and, and people are always like, well, Europe has a ton of guns. And it's just like, yeah, but the license that you need to have a rifle and most and most of the guns in Europe, from, from my understanding, aren't handguns. They're rifles. And the the license you need for that is very difficult. It's kind of like it's kind of like a driving license in Europe, which is extremely hard to get. I mean, the, the joke is the, the joke is in Europe is how many times did you fail your test? I don't know anybody who's failed a driving test. 
they just give you a license no matter what out here. But in Europe, it's very difficult. Like they take tests seriously. You know, they have people go to, you got to go to shooting ranges and this and that, and then you can finally get your, your license. And then, and, you know, people really revere their right to own that gun because they worked really hard to become certified to have it. And I think like we start, we need to start doing that. We need to start de-escalating. We, it's like, there's just, there's so many little, like there is no one silver bullet. There is no one easy answer. And, and Americans for the last 30 years have been brainwashed into believing that there's a simple answer to fix everything. And uh, there's yeah, that's, not, that's we're lazy, we're, we're, we're obese, we're just, we're I, like I our to, mind has become so at like, just, okay, sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, I mean, I, 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 so I think that the only way to actually make it, make anything happen is with, I hate to say it, but incremental change. I mean, like you either burn everything to the ground and start from scratch, but that still takes decades, if not centuries to rebuild or things happen incrementally and it's very, very painful and you're constantly pulling teeth. But like, I mean, I think you could go into any, any black neighborhood in America and say, only black cops and just do that right away and say, you have, you know, we're going to give you six months, uh, yeah, uh but benefits point, and you need to, you need to go, you need to go work somewhere else where it's majority white. You're not allowed well, to be a white cop in a black neighborhood. And that could be an easy, that, that could be a great well, first step. And that's something you do tomorrow. Yeah. If you well, wanted to hold on. Like, like what I'm saying is that I don't even think that's possible. I don't think there's enough people who would get on board with that. I think the well, only thing that I, mean, I, I, I think that, I mean, who's going to, who's going to make that a lot? Who's going to like, like the thing is, is that there's so much, I mean, burning so, it down isn't going to like, people aren't going to be like, yes, let's all sign up to burn it all down. Like that's, well, I mean, course, you know. you're, you're right. You're right. So that means, I mean, it kind of, to me, it seems like, well, we can only teach young people a different way and hope they continue to teach it for generations to come so that things change. I don't know what is more what is more possible? I just, I don't have the answers. I'm also a white guy too. So I have my own, I'm, I'm also blinded. If, if, if my family was being killed by authorities, I would have, I would feel like I have no choice but to fight back and fight back with everything I got. I mean, like, like I, I see videos of, of black men and women saying, no, we can't act violently. This is a nonviolent protest. But if your life is being threatened, you have to defend yourself. There's just, nothing you can do anymore so i understand i understand the the reaction and and the desire to to act violently i mean that's i mean yeah it maybe i mean well i think a lot of black people and during this protest realize that every time a riot happens they get tagged as thugs and criminals and it's just hurting their cause more and that's why a lot of them are saying you know they're they're trying to stop i mean there's this great video of this guy, I think it's in San Francisco, this fucking, you know, white privileged piece of shit. He's, um, and this guy was definitely one of those Antifa guys. Uh, he's breaking the sidewalk with a hammer. Oh yeah. Trying to, yeah. So trying to like, uh, have more objects to throw at the police. And then a bunch of people just tackle him and hand him over to the police. And I think if, and I think it has to be a two way street. It's just like you can't accept, you can't expect somebody to trust you if you don't trust them. And that goes for both the protesters and the police. And so I think like it's it's privileged to say protesters should try to trust the good the good cops when the good cops haven't stood up for them for the last four hundred years. It's totally privileged to say that. But at the same time, a lot of black people are coming around and saying, look, every time we we break anything, it just makes it worse. It's still, I mean. So how do you defend yourself? And they're saying that this is the best way for us to defend ourselves right now. And that's oh, no. why a lot of them, they're saying, stop looting. Don't do this. This isn't us breaking stuff. We're yeah. here just to stand in front of you and say, stop killing us. And, and I guess that just happens to happen over and over and over again. I mean, Cornell West says says that you have to. What I don't know his exact words, but he says basically you have to fail again and you have to fail better, and yeah. and you have to you have to fail better is what he says. You have to fail, fail, and fail because I guess acting, reacting with violence is not going to solve the problem, and reacting nonviolently is also not going to solve the problem. 
but hopefully it will one day. And that's yeah. all. I mean, that's that's. And it. that's a horrible thing to have to hear when you're when you're when your people are being killed, when your community is being attacked over and over and over on a daily basis, terrorized. Because that's what the police are. They're fucking terrorists. In these communities, the police are actual terrorists. They're terrorizing the the people who pay their pay their fucking salary. It's terrible. The people in these communities are paying their salary, and they turn around and terrorize the people paying their salary. Could you imagine living in that situation every fucking day of your life? Worried about stepping outside your front door for fear of the people that you're paying to protect you could kill you at any second. That is some dystopian 1984 shit right there. Yeah, it's pretty and black people have been dealing with it for 400 fucking years in this country. All right. Well, we got to wrap this up because we got Jason Williams on in about 10 minutes. So yeah. anyway, we just wanted to come on, share our thoughts because... Some somebody needs to be saying something other than what we're reading and hearing on on in the crypto world. So. And you know what? And also, there's certain times to joke, and there's certain times there's certain times to be you know to joke and be sarcastic and 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 continue your brand. And there's certain times to act like a fucking human being. And this is one of those times. So to all the all the Twitter all the crypto Twitter accounts that. You know, your brand is to joke and to, and to be sarcastic at the expense of other people. Really, really question wh- whether this is the time for that. Please. I'm just going to stop. <laughs> <laughs>